Hey guys, it's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and if you've been watching this channel, you know that I love the Teensy microcontroller. We've used this thing to make a DIY synth, MIDI controllers, everything we've thrown at this, it's handled like a champ. But there's one thing I didn't know about this. You can use it to make a USB audio interface for your computer. That's crazy! So in this video, we're going to wire this up and program it to be a USB audio interface. And maybe if you need to get audio into your computer via USB, this is all you'll need. But before we start, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all your circuit board and manufacturing needs. They can do circuit boards, multi-layer boards, aluminum boards, 3D printing, CNC machining, injection molding, and assembly. They can do it all. PCBWay is very maker-friendly with lots of services for small creators like myself. So check out PCBWay today and they can make your dream project a reality. Click the link in the video description to let them know that Dave sent you and you'll get yourself some free goodies. So thanks again to PCBWay. To start with, let's look at the parts I'm using and the way I've got my equipment set up. So what I have here is the uh, Teensy 3.2, you can see it on the bottom here. And on the top, I have the Teensy audio board. The way I've connected them is I've taken some long headers and you see I've kind of gone through the top of the board and there's enough sticking out at the bottom that I can stick it into a breadboard for experimenting. And then soldered the audio board at the top of the headers here. So I've made kind of this little sandwich now, uh, to get the USB out, we'll just use the Teensy's USB jack here. On the audio board right here, there are four pins that are line input. So basically we have two ground pins and a left and a right channel. So we're gonna use those for our audio in. So since I use this board for a lot of experiments, instead of permanently soldering a jack here, I've soldered some header pins. And what I do is take one of these eighth inch stereo jacks and these are for uh, audio AV installations, uh, security camera installations, stuff like that. But basically it's an eighth inch stereo jack that breaks out to these screw terminals. And then I just take some breadboarding wire. So these are male on one end and I, I clamp them in with the screws. And then I can take the female end here and just place them on these header pins. So let's do that. We're going to take the ground and go to one of the G pins for ground. And then we'll take the right channel and we'll go to the R pin. And then we'll take the left channel and we'll go to the L pin. And there you go. We have our jack all set up. Now I'm going to use this breadboard just mainly to hold the thing in place. So I'll just go right to the edge of the board and put it in. And there you go. Nice, nice and solid. So to test this circuit, I'm going to use this Roland J6 as a sound source and this old Windows 10 computer as the USB host. So I'll connect a stereo 1 8 inch cable from the output of the J6 into the input of our Teensy. And then I'll take a USB cable from my old laptop here and plug that in. And there you go. There's our test setup. Now we'll take a look at the program that makes this work. So at the top here, we have some libraries that we're going to include. We have some connections. This is the way the Teensy audio library works and how you connect one thing to another. And then we have some basic setup functions. So first of all, let's see how I came up with these commands. Now, fortunately for us, the Teensy website has this great system design tool for the audio library. And if you just do a search, uh, go to pjrc.com and uh, do a search for 
system design tool and you should find this. And this is a really great drag and drop format for uh, assembling a whole bunch of different audio configurations and using all their components. So the first thing we're going to need is an input and we're going to use this I2S input. And you can see it, it pops up with a picture of our audio board and it's showing you where the connections are for the line input. So let's just drag one of those onto the workspace. And once you select it, you'll get a summary of all its functions. It's showing you that this module receives 16-bit audio from the audio shield or other I2S device using I2S master mode. It's showing you on our audio board where you would find the line inputs right there. So now that we have our input, we need an output. So let's go down to the output section and our output is going to be USB audio. So we'll just drag that right there. And you can see by the summary, it sends stereo audio to a PC or Mac. TNC appears as a USB sound device. So there you go. And to connect them, all we do is drag a little line from the input to the output. And there's two stereo channels, so we'll do two lines. So we're not quite done yet. We need one more thing. The audio board uses a chip called the SGTL 5000. If we go right to the bottom here to the control section, you'll see it, SGTL 5000. And we'll drag it on there. And we don't need to connect it to anything. We just need to have it there. So the uh, SGTL 5000 is kind of an all-in-one uh, audio solution that is used in quite a few projects, I would imagine. And if we go down, we can see the functions. This is very useful. So first of all, we're going to need to enable it. That's very important. We can set the volume level for the headphones here if we want to. We need to set the input so it can either be the line in or the mic in. And we can set other various gains and levels. And you can see it can do some auto gain, some surround sound, some enhanced bass. It does a lot of stuff. So once you've got your components in place, all you have to do is export the code. So click export. And there is all the code we need to get this set up and just copy this. And then just go to your code and paste it at the top. And you can see I've already done that. So all the includes and all these connections are what we generated with that tool. Now the setup is where we need to basically do the little functions that we saw for the SGTL 5000 chip. So the Teensy Audio Library needs some storage space to work. So we're going to assign it uh, 12 blocks of storage space. I believe they're 128 bytes each per block. But we're going to give it 12 since we're not doing too much. Uh, this should be fine. But the more things you add, the more memory you might need to allocate. So you can see in our auto-generated code, we made this device called the SGTL5001. And uh, here it is here and when we want to use the parameters we have to give it its name and then dot and whatever parameter we want to set so first of all we're going to set enable so that's going to enable the chip that's probably very important next we'll select the input so input select and we're going to use this phrase here audio input line in shown exactly like this if you did it right it will turn blue and finally, I don't know if this is important or not, but we're going to set the volume to one half. So basically the volume parameters can go from zero, which is off, to one, which is full volume. And 0 0.5 is basically half volume. So I think this is just the headphone volume and won't really affect our USB output, but let's just put it in anyways. Why not? And finally, our loop statement, we, we're not doing anything. This is so simple. We don't need anything there. So now we're ready to upload the code, but we have to make sure we configure our tools properly. So if you go to the tools menu, we have to make sure we select the correct board. So if I go to uh, Teensy Duino, you'll see all the Teensy boards. If you don't have this, that means you haven't installed the Teensy Duino software. Go to the Teensy website and install the software and you will get this extra menu item. Quick tip, when you're installing it, make sure you say yes to install all libraries and then you'll get all the audio libraries and everything we'll need for this experiment. So I'm using the Teensy 3.2, so I'll make sure that is selected. 
The USB type, you got to make sure it's set to audio. Now we just need to make sure we select our correct port. So if you plug your Teensy in, it should show up here as a selectable device. So we'll just select it and now we're ready to go. So now all you have to do is click the upload button. So now I've plugged the Teensy into my laptop and I'm using OSB to monitor the audio. And if I go to this audio source and click properties, you should see that Teensy Audio is one of the selectable audio interfaces. So we'll just select that. I've got my J6 plugged into the headphone jack. And if I start it playing, we should hear something. So there you go, apparently you can turn a Teensy board into a USB audio interface. What a world we live in. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit the like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff. And before we go, let's give a shout out to my wonderful patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much guys for helping and I'll see you all very soon.